What's up you guys, Devin here, coming at you with another video. Today's subject is going to be on the topic of anamorphic lenses, how you can get into them for a really, really good price. For those of you who don't know what anamorphic lenses are, you've probably seen it in some of your favorite movies or possibly even TV and never even really noticed it. But pretty much anytime you've seen, and it's very popular in like action movies, anytime you've seen like this lens flare that kind of like spans out, or if you've watched the last Super Bowl halftime show where there's actually like in my opinion, way too much of it, like tons of little lines shooting everywhere. That is a side effect from an anamorphic lens. Another telling point that you're looking at anamorphic footage is if you see the black bars on each side of the video. This isn't a perfect telling point because some people do this in post just by cropping in their images. You see a lot of this going on on YouTube and it's because they want it to appear like an anamorphic lens like they want it to get that wide aspect ratio but every time you see it on youtube you're usually seeing someone just crop the full frame of their image by a little bit at the top a little bit at the bottom so they get the kind of like wide aspect ratio they want anytime you see that in movies where you also see the lens flare that is done with a lens the reason i'm really excited to have the small anamorphic lens with my phone in my kit is because i kind of look at anamorphic at least the way i shoot kind of like drone footage while the cameras i use on the ground are much better than my phone or any drone I have. Just having a few of those drone shots, even though the sensor is completely smaller and a totally different look than my other sensors, just having the ability to mix my drone footage in there really like add something to any projects I'm working on. And that's kind of the same way I feel about the anamorphic lens when paired with this phone. While you totally could work really hard and shoot something brilliant with this whole setup, I will probably in practical use, use it to do a couple of night shots and anytime there's a really nice flare from the sun, just to get one of those really nice stripes or if I want a certain type of bokeh, I can use this as kind of like a C cam just to get these really specific shots. But anyway, that's enough of me ranting kind of its use case. Let's get into the products and kind of show them off a bit. Now Sandmark has gone ahead and sent me two products. One product is the anamorphic lens with the photo case. You need this little setup to actually be able to use it at all. This first product is the anamorphic lens bundle. It comes with a phone case, one of their basic cases, and the anamorphic lens itself, as well as a clip and a tiny bag and cloth to keep it all in. This goes for about $129 and is a crazy good deal for everything you're getting considered. This video will be shot on an iPhone 12 Pro and so they also sent me to review their new iPhone 12 Pro case. Throughout the last two weeks of using these two cases, I've spent about one week on this one and one week on this one. This one being the standard one that comes with the anamorphic bundle and this one being the one that you can pay an extra, I believe, $39.99 for. For the last two weeks, I've been running both the cases. I've tried the first week with one case, and that was the one that came with the bundle originally. And then the second week, we've switched the Pro case, which I, I honestly say I do like the Pro case a bit more. It doesn't add too much bulk, but it does add a little bit more protection to it. Um, specifically in the camera bump area, it just really protects this camera system. It's a little bit more space gray instead of this like white brush aluminum, which I like. I've spent a good amount of time with both these these cases already. The case that comes with the lens is very solid. It allows the lens to attach to it, which is probably your main objective when buying this. But also, you know, it stops your phone from getting scratched up, but it doesn't offer much drop protection. As opposed to the Pro case, the Pro case is a little more matted all the way around. It's got a little bit more of a lip on the front. The buttons are also covered and something you don't have on the standard case. If I'm not mistaken too, they've also enabled their Pro case to be more compatible with the magnetic accessories. There's a little cutout and a magnet back here. So if you are using any of the newer iPhones and you wanna be able to use like stuff like MagSafe or the wallets or any of the magnetic, accessories that come out, you may wanna look into getting the Pro case as your main driver. Moving on to what else comes with the lens, you're gonna get this Sandmark bag. It's really nice, it's got a nice drawstring, the materials are great. It comes with one little cleaning cloth inside, which I've actually misplaced. It comes with this lens clip. This is so if you didn't wanna buy a case or if you had a phone that wasn't compatible with the case, you could simply screw your lens onto here and clip this onto any phone you have and it will work. Now I've used a few different lens companies. I've tried out Moment and tried some other third party brands from Amazon. And one thing I wanna say Sandmark nailed is their build quality. The build quality is great, but this one specific thing is something no other company I've seen has done, and that is include a rear cap for the lens. They have a front cap, and a lot of companies will put the front cap, but a lot of them just let this opening 
just stay out, which this is a little lens that you're probably gonna be throwing around in your bag a lot. So I would really enjoy having like a back lens cap, which they include. So that's really nice that you can just cap in both sides and now you can throw this just in your bag and you don't have to worry about it. Taking off the front lens cap again, I just wanna like, this is great. We're gonna probably insert some really nice B-roll right here, but this element just looks so cool. Every time the light hits it, you can kind of like see the little single lines that are going through. And this is like the defect in this lens that will make that anamorphic lens flare anytime you get a really nice light hit on it. But yeah, it's just a beautiful, beautiful element. I'm gonna attach this to the phone real quick just so you can see how the whole setup kind of looks. Whenever you're attaching it to the phone, if you have an iPhone 11 Pro, you actually have two little threads on the case right here. And those two threads are the main angle camera and the telephotos. And this is great because this allows you to use the anamorphic lens with the telephoto lens or the standard angle camera. Once you have the lens on there, it does twist a little bit and they have this little line on the case and a little line on top of the lens. And you wanna line those up and that's how you know you're gonna be getting straight steady shots and you're not gonna have your lens flare going off in different directions and you're not gonna have weird warpy stuff all over. I'm gonna boot up the camera right here so we can kind of just see a little bit of behind the scenes of what you'll be looking at if you go to your default camera app. So here we are in the default camera app. I have the lens lined up perfectly, but you will notice it looks a little bubbly and look, if we shine up, we can start seeing some of that lens flare take effect. But this is not how this footage should look at all. This is unsqueezed footage. So whenever you're using anamorphic, it smashes everything in. And this is what creates those oval bokehs and that kind of oval shape to everything. But this isn't the end game of your footage. You don't want your footage to just stay looking this way. So anytime you're shooting this footage, you will have to go in post after, whether you have Premiere or Final Cut, and go to the anamorphic settings and click de-squeeze. The anamorphic we're working with is a 1.33 time squeeze. So go into your project and click that for your settings and that will de-squeeze your image. Now the downside to this is this is an extra step. Usually if you're filming something with your phone, you're not necessarily wanting to go in and post and do all this. Luckily, there's a slew of apps out there that'll actually de-squeeze within your phone camera. So you can see what you're shooting, how it's supposed to look, and already have that image out. My favorite app that I've found so far is Filmic Pro. If you're getting serious about shooting video in general, Filmic Pro is a great app. But what I love about them is the ability to de-squeeze. So I'm gonna go into my Filmic Pro app right now real quick. And now I'm going to film this exact same little scene, but I'm going to have it de-squeezed within the Filmic Pro app. Now, as you can see, this is the exact same angle we had before. We'll actually point it up a little bit to see a little bit of that anamorphic bloom that we can get on the lens from the key light. But yeah, you can see this looks a lot more straight. This looks a lot more natural. Another nice thing about Filmic Pro is you actually get to choose your autofocus point. So I'm like, focusing on the anamorphic bag right now, and I'm moving all of this around. And it's just really, it's really enjoyable. Like it gives you a lot of control that your phone doesn't normally give you. But just look at that image. Now the desk is filthy and all that, but if you just look at what we're getting out of here, it looks really, really good. You can see it's added those black bars because it squeezed that image out. And you can see a little bit of that anamorphic lens flare like seeping in from the key light, which is really nice. So needless to say, this is a really great and amazing tool for adding some flair to your footage. Like, I would not even be bothered mixing a couple of shots of this in with my full frame cameras. I like using it kind of like a drone shot whenever I'm mixing with my full frame cameras. Like real quick, maybe do a time lapse of a night street, or real quick, maybe get a quick little side run of a sunset, or just a time lapse of something. And just being able to have that really awesome vertical lens flare. I wanna say, I can't find anything really wrong with this product. The only critique I would have is that you do have to spend a little bit extra to get an app that de-squeezes it if you want your footage to just be like working and so you can view it within your phone and not have to take any additional steps afterwards. But Filmic Pro is only a $15 app, which is not that big of a deal considering everything you're getting with the ability to change frame rates and the ability to automatically de-squeeze in your viewing and in post. It's just been really nice shooting with over the past couple of weeks. I've taken it to a couple of our family gatherings just to have fun and see what kind of different looks I can get. I will roll that on the screen for you now so you can take a look for yourself.
Another thing they've really hit out of the park is actually putting like a really nice filter thread on their lens. Um, I really like this because usually you have to get all kind of like mods if you want to use like an ND filter to get like the proper frame rates on your camera. But they just done great construction and kind of like thought of everything you would need on a little phone lens like this if you wanted to just take it a step up to the next level than what's offered on your traditional cameras on your phone. So tell me what you thought of the footage. I mean, I think it looks like astounding. Um, don't judge me on some of those shots. I didn't have an ND filter, so I just used the shutter to expose because that's what I typically do if I do not have an ND filter. But that's amazing. It's amazing we can push the phone footage so far just with a little simple $129 mod. And like, you could totally fool people that some of those shots were not done on a phone easily. But that's gonna be it for this video. Leave a comment down below telling me about what you thought are some use cases that you could see yourself using this in. Um, honestly, I don't have any bad critiques about this. Maybe that like, I wish they offered another case that was a little bulkier, but, but that's not really what this company's trying to do. They're not really trying to protect your phone. They're trying to enhance the cameras on your phone in which case they succeeded all the way around on that. If you guys wanna check out anything you've seen in this video, I'll leave links to everything down below. Hit that like button if you found this useful. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna be updated for more videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.